Oh, you guys thought this was over? No, we ended our Zingu trip at the halfway point. Welcome to Bolivia. We are only the third group to ever come back here and fish this fishery. Big fish. <laughs> Unbelievable. I think the best word I can use to describe this fishery is magical. And that's, that's a tough term to just loosely throw out there. I fished so many different places, but this, as far as big fish application goes, this is this is top, top freaking five. Not feel too hot. Oh, oh, that's a giant. That's a giant. This is crazy, dude. This is a fish that I've been looking for almost my entire life. I think there's probably no cooler doubleheader on planet Earth. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh, we did it. Hot, sweaty, stinky, covered in fish. It's a good problem to have here in the jungle. We are. Uh, we just took a nice little hiatus. I took a quick little nap, let the midday lull pass us, and the uh, sun is starting to turn. So I think we're gonna head back out in the water. I think the main objective now is, is after we've caught a couple of decent ones on, on live bait is to continue, of course, using live bait throughout this week because we have so many days left, but also to incorporate some lure fishing. It's been a goal not only to catch one of these fish, but to actually feel that bite, that thump uh, directly connected to your rod. You know, when you're fishing the balloon, it's amazing to watch that, that balloon just sink under the surface as fast as you can even blink your eye. But what I believe is so much fun about fishing is feeling that connection, that eat. You guys saw their heads, you guys saw their mouths. A lot of force, a lot of power. And with that, I want to feel it on the lure. So now that I've gotten Scott and I've got our first ever Arapaima, I think it's time to get a little creative and add a bit of uh, diversity to this series because we still have so many days left. You know, this is a good problem to have, but I'm just like overwhelmed, to be honest. Like I caught two Arapaima this morning. Absolutely on Yeah. Keep casting to that bitch. That side? On the lure, on the lure. Oh my god, on the lure. No way, that was so sick. On the lure. Oh, oh my god, that was insane. I don't know if we're gonna be able to keep this thing pinned. I've got trebles on, but that fish absolutely pummeled me. Whoo! That fish is throwing down. Too. Oh, yeah. Oh, he's off. No, no. No, no. no. He's, on, he's, on. he's off. He's off. He's off. Ah. Uh, Damn. Ah. Uh, well, how's the bite? Crazy. Rocked it. Rocked it. <laughs> oh, that was my first bite on uh, artificial. Was not anticipating that because we really haven't had too much action on the uh, live or dead bait. That was incredible. Like I was saying earlier, I want to feel that connection, that that bite, that fish to rod feel when he eats it artificial, and that was way more than I could have anticipated for. I just didn't keep him tight enough. User error. Whew. Hammered it though. Holy sh That felt so good. Oh my God. Back at camp. Today, was a humble session. 
I did manage to catch two of my first ever Arapaima in the morning, but our much anticipated evening bite just nosedive. But regardless, something happened today that I think is gonna fuel the rest of this trip, and that was that lure eat. That was insane. Way more, in my opinion, adrenaline inducing than the watching the bobber go down. That was absolutely nuts. So with that in mind, I think over the next couple of days, I really wanna make that a goal of mine, to catch one on, on a lure. I think it'd be cool to catch one on a lure, my first ever airplane on lure, and then bring that home as, as a trophy. As like, you know, we got it done, we did it, we came here, we conquered. Um, of course, with the help of this amazing staff and, and, and crew. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, it was it's so cool. It is such an amazing fish. I think if you've never wanted to do anything like this, put it on your bucket list for sure. But uh, we're gonna eat some grub. A bit for all, the, all you beautiful wieners out there. And uh, we'll catch you tomorrow morning for yet another session of Arapaima Gigas chasing. Number three, we are back at it. As you can see, we are still tried and true with the artificial and throwing a little tiny repellent twitching wrap. They don't make these anymore, sad enough, but these are an awesome jungle lure. Uh, anywhere from fishing shallow reefs to, you know, lagoons like this, fishing to gravitate towards baits of this caliber. This is just kind of a sub walking twitch bait. Catch peacocks on this, you can catch arapaima, um, I lost my uh, my shad wrap yesterday in literally these reeds. I, could, I don't know where it's at. It's, it's like gone. I tried to find the leader, but oh well. Regardless, we're back in the spot. It's morning. Fish should be uh, showing themselves. Actually, there's a big one right there. One just came up. So we're going to fish this uh, grass edge and hope to get our first fish on artificial. It's going to happen. I feel it. I would be like... One of the very few people in the world who should have not buy my own lure. Yeah, oh yeah. Or an not, not a common thing. No, I don't. Very Good few stuff. people. Yeah, very I'll have to try to reel this in. I always wonder. Is that okay? Yeah, you're, you're yeah. Okay. Okay. Woo! That was sick. That was sick. <laughs> Destroyed it. That was insane, dude. That was insane. Scott, should we boga him? Just make sure he doesn't. Oh my god! It's a good one. In. Thank you, brother. That's amazing. Finally hooked up on an Arapaima with a lure. It is a whole different ball game. Feeling that thump on an artificial. This might be a good one too. We're dragging them to the beach uh, so we can get a safe unhooking and uh, make sure this fish is in the water while we take photos and video. Wow, that was insane. Literally, your heart stops when you feel that bite. Oh, <laughs> oh my gosh. That's absolutely stupid. Absolutely stupid. Oh my God. These things are no joke. I would, I would call this fish just about officially landed, which would mean this is about our eighth, but we're still gonna try to beach him. The lure's completely gone. 
I think I mentioned this prior, but these fish eat in such a unique way. You know, Bruno's explaining that when they suck in a bait or a lure, they're not striking it like a trout or a bass. They are simply opening up their mouths and just using all that force, that power to suction that bait in. It's a very aggressive take and you feel it on the end of the rod. It's like, it's like lightning hits, hits your line. It's the best way I can describe it. The best comparison I think you can say is it's a musky lure. Yeah. It's musky rod. It's way more than but, musky. But, but scaled up. Yeah. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, the closest thing I can compare it to, like Scott said, is like a musky tank. It's four times bigger and way cooler. Yeah. It's about to come up again. Oh, look at this dorsal fin. Wow. They're insane. They're, they're such unique fish. Like, a lot of their strength and force comes from their top end. Like, if you look at their tails, their tails are actually really small. All their power seems to come up, come from the upper end, and that's why you always see them not fully clear the air, but their top half always goes nuts out of the water. And uh, it's also one of the reasons why you have to be careful when you're holding them, because they'll just use that head to bum rush you. All right, we're hopping out with this big beast. Big logs right here. Yeah, big logs, thank you. Okay. You want me to try and bug it, John, or you want me to bring it? Uh, no, you can try bug if you want, or you can give it to me and I'll do it. There she comes, bringing her right towards you. Wow. Amazing. <laughs> We did it. Look at the color on this one. It's like I a, know. <laughs> Boys. That is a pretty one. Holy f <sighs> Wow. If you would have told me that on day three, I would have caught three arapaima, two of which on bait and one of which on lure, which has been a, another life goal of mine, I would not have believed you. What these fish have in power, they definitely match with beauty. Just look at their scales. They've got these amazing bright red tips on the end of each scale. And mind you too, these scales are absolutely enormous. This is a fish that is straight out of the land before times, a true beast. And uh, you know, with that, we wanna take precaution and make sure that we keep the fish in the water, get the hook out and uh, do our best. Just cut that hook, mm -hmm. perfect, perfect, perfect. Pretty much free. Yeah, you think so? Yeah. Pull it yeah, out. We're free. There we go. Oh man. Hey, that's awesome. Where's the other where's the other hook? Uh huh? it's it's somewhere down here. Oh he's got it, he's got <laughs> okay, it. Okay, good. So Explain what that. what Bruno just did is uh, super important. A lot of people when they fish for these things, uh, you know, they don't take good care of them. Uh, but what we did is a bit of surgery. That hook was literally all the way back here. And uh, rather than trying to dig in there, we just took a pair of bolt cutters, that's cut them out, weird. and uh, now this fish is hundred percent going to live, which is makes me happy. I don't want to catch a fish and, and know that it has a 0% chance of living. Let's tape it too real quick, Scott, if you don't mind. I don't mind. 76, this is my biggest, yeah. <laughs> On the lure too. I'd guess 90 pounds, 80 pounds. <laughs> Look at that beast, man. My biggest arapaima ever on the artificial. Truly a once in a lifetime dream fish come true <sighs> they're so cool dude they are so freaking cool <laughs> oh she's excited oh she might go look at that she's ready to go wow this is ready to go absolutely choked the lure we had her sitting in the shallows for quite some time that is the strongest and the hardest we've had one swim off my official biggest 176 on the lure. Unreal. We had a lot of ambitions these two weeks. Yeah. We fit them all. Yeah, we fit them all. Bruno, thank you. This place is unbelievable. If you want dreams to come true, this is definitely a place to be. Dreams Angling Expedition. It's a very fitting name for a place that uh, I think could make a lot of people's dreams true. I know the Air Pima is very much sought after in the United States. Quick little factoid, funny enough, over here, they don't, I don't think they're getting as much love as they should be. They're primarily a fish that people farm and it's the reason why they're here. Uh, a farm in Peru flooded and uh, with that flood, the air pima traveled over um, country lines to Bolivia, which is pretty nuts that fish can travel that far. And uh, now they're considered to be non-native, but very much thriving. And uh, it's just crazy to think this could be one of the best Arapaima fishers, fishers ever, and it wasn't 50 years ago. There was literally none here. 15. F 15 years ago. 15 years ago. Wow, that's insane. And now it is, I don't think there could be more of them. Anymore. Thriving. Yeah.
So crazy, man. And there's big ones in here too. Not that that's not a big one, but there's like, you know, you were saying 200 pounders. Yeah, there's, there's some absolute true megas. So there she goes. She just grabbed there. One last wave goodbye. And uh, yeah, let's go catch your big sister. <laughs> that was awesome. Woo! That was intense. Put her there. What? Look at the snake. Snake? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Poisonous or no? No. No. No snakes are poisonous, they're venomous. <laughs> Put it there. <laughs> Just engulfed it. Which is enough to work. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Right on the point. Come on. Oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. It's right here. This fish might come off. He's right here. He's right here. I'm at leader right now. That is super sketch. Yeah, I'm going to grab it. Oh, that was a crazy. Oh, it's a good one another good one my second bite of the day on artificial i retired the original lure and i picked up one of scott's um, 12 inch gliding wraps twitching wraps and uh, this fish wanted it just as bad Whew, absolutely pooped on it jesus christ oh my god oh my god yeah he does not like that i just absolutely smoked him with this lure oh Man, something about the lure is just, it's a whole different pursuit. Like that to me is why fishing is so much fun is like the chase, the pursuit. There's nothing wrong with sitting there and waiting for the bite, but casting that fish repetitively and not knowing when that bite's gonna come is truly extraordinary. Here she comes. It's <laughs> a good one. How big is this? I don't know. It's about the same size, I think. At first it did not feel that big. It, it, ate, and put so much slack into your line. it ate so close to the boat. Yeah, I put a ton of slack in there. When you were like untied, that line was scoping to the right. Yeah. It's gonna jump. Oh, that lure is more on the, oh, I think it's a little more on the outside. Is it? Line. That's good. I thought so. And we're just like that. We're back on the shore. It's a good feeling to have. Anytime. Oh my, it's a big one, dude. This is, I think, bigger too. I think you're right. This one's not hooked as well, so we're gonna see if we can get him to uh settle down and chill out for us so we can get some pictures oh my gosh good fish <laughs> good fish look at that Whew. definitely a bit fatter own that owner yeah do you want me to hold the hook with the pliers bruno be careful be careful yeah. take, let's take our time he's got him okay you got him open that school <laughs> Thank you. Got him. Appreciate it. I didn't think, uh, I didn't think this was possible. But we got it freaking done. We have caught now 11 total Arapaima as a group, and just this boat has successfully landed and released nine. Look at this beast, man. I'm gonna put this guy on tape real quick, see how long she is. Well, I guess it's just as big as the last one, maybe a little bit smaller. Yeah, dude, 185. 185. She's bigger. She's bigger. Come here, baby. <laughs> Come here, baby. Come here, baby. That's a good start. <laughs> that is a good fish. There we go. Yeah, it's a little heavier. A little more awkward to hold, for sure. There we go. Wow. Absolute brute. <laughs> <laughs> this place is magical. <sighs> insane. Wow. Absolutely freaking insane. Shot. 
amazing. Thank you. Amazing. <laughs> I don't, I'm speechless, man. Speechless. Well, we're back on the honey hole, the nugget, the Arapaima bone zone. Caleb is now holding the rod. We're gonna see if we can all come home full of Arapaima experience. Just had a nice eat. Uh, went way too far in the grass, unfortunately, and just popped us off. But the mornings are, are really not that bad. They're pretty solid. What happened? Oh, right there. Yeah, Arapaima literally just rolled maybe 10 feet from the boat. I still cannot get over how unfazed these fish are with our presence. Like, we are not being super quiet, and the Arapaima could literally care less, which is just so far from my past experience chasing after these things. But I wanted to show you guys the damage that that last one did to this uh, this gliding wrap. Bent out the tail split ring holder right there where the hook connects to the bait. Uh, bent out this, I believe, 3X hook. And uh, overall just mangled the paint. Pretty crazy. It's, it's kind of cool fishing for a fish that leaves its mark on your lure. I don't know why, but I find it to be... Kind of neat, and uh, definitely gonna retire that first one since it's the first lure I caught my Arapaima on, but uh, this one is Scott, so I think we're probably still gonna use this, or? You think so? That bent out line Yeah, yeah, true. Why not? not so great. Maybe we'll retire this one, but we actually have quite a few. He's got some 15 inch sizes too. But uh, yeah, man, it's the freaking life out here. The, uh, the flies are chewing your way, but it, it doesn't even matter because the fish are biting. It's an incredible time so you know it's good fishing when Caleb drops the camera and picks up the rod that's when you know it's absolutely unreal and he's got a balloon with a triura and uh, Scott's throwing the glide and I'm just taking a quick little break soaking up the day and just watching these boys get something get something on the end of the line absolutely perfect oh dear bit you get bit let him take it let him take it Caleb's bit Caleb's bit Caleb wait that is the hardest bite of his crap. Yeah, that's a good bite. He's running out too, which is good. Yeah, yeah, perfect, 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 perfect. Just hold it. Oh my god, that thing is so far out. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling. Real, 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 real. Wow, dude, that thing took off. That one did completely different things from every fish that trip. Caleb's hooked up. That air is keep rolling. I am ready to be caught. Holy sh! That was. Oh, there he is. That first jump was sick, like a hundred yards away. That was, that was cool. wild. <laughs> the bummer went straight down a <laughs> That's really the only one left that matters. Nice job, man. <laughs> first ever Arapaima. Unbelievable. <laughs> Here, I'm hopping through. And not only is that fish significant, but that is our tenth. <laughs> sure, fine, my man. <laughs> Unbelievable. Holy hell, dude. <laughs> Look at that. You're not going home without an Arapaima. Unbelievable. <laughs> that good. Dude, that's nuts. I bet she grabs there. She'll grab. Keep an eye on her. Put it here, bro. Put it there. Thank you, Bruno. <laughs> Woo! We all caught one. <laughs> and that's double digits, man. <laughs> on Woo! We did it. I can't believe not only myself, not only Scott, but even Caleb, who is usually holding the camera, but had the opportunity to pick up the rod, has now caught an Arapaima. All thanks to, uh, to Bruno. It's just been such an amazing, an unexpected series of events. I know I keep saying it, and I don't want to harp on it too much, but places like this are just truly magical. Welcome Unreal. welcome to the Era Slime Club. Dude, slimy, it's not stinky though. <laughs> no. It's just weird. Very good point that Caleb just brought up. Like when you're holding these fish, you're flat out you're like 50% Arapaima slime, 50% water, you're covered in them, but they do not smell. It's weird, like they're not like pike, they're not like barracuda or carp or shad. They are clean smelling fish, very strange.
but I'm so happy that uh, that Caleb caught one before we head back home. The conditions have completely changed. You know, we've had wind for roughly over seven hours, and that really puts a damper on the bite, obviously. Sometimes wind can be good for fishing, but for this type of fishing, it's not ideal. Um, you definitely want calm waters, but hey man, that's awesome. Congratulations to everyone in the boat. This has been unfathomable. Magical see, trip. See if, we can, uh, see if we can stack up even more numbers. That makes, what number is that? 12? 12? It's 12. For the group, 12. 10 total. For this boat. For this boat, 10 Arapaima for two and a half days. Cheers. That's it. I feel like we've done it all. We've caught them on bait. We've caught them on lures. I've caught one, Scott's caught one, and now Caleb's caught one. So incredible. This place is, I think the best word I can use to describe this fishery is magical. And that's, that's a tough term to just loosely throw out there. I've fished so many different places. I've caught fish in every single continent with the exception of Antarctica, which hopefully one day I get to fish. But this, as far as like Arapaima fishing goes and big fish application goes, this is this is top, top freaking five. But anyway, the reason I want to turn the camera on while this lagoon is absolutely filthy rich of Arapaima, it is also loaded with caiman. There's one in particular that keeps visiting the camp and it seems like he is in some ways kind of hunting us or on the prowl. So hopefully later tonight I can show you guys what this thing looks like. It's an absolute beast. Every night he comes around and knocks these boats around, makes a bunch of ruckus, uh, snorts, blows a bunch of air out of his nose. And uh, he came very close. He came up on land. He was curious as to what all, all the, you know, all the ruckus was with us in the tent snoring. Uh, so we got, the, we got the fire built there. To, keep them away. Bruno said that you build a fire here in Bolivia to keep the fiends away. The most specific fiend being not only mosquitoes, but came. So know this has been quite a long monologue, but yeah, I'm just very excited to share this with you. And I know Caleb's very stoked to edit this one as well. Look at that sunset. It's incredible. Everything's flowed. Okay. Bruno. What are these called? Empanadas. No. What'd you call them? No. This one. Oh, this is what? Yeah. What is That's this called? Jungle waffles. Jungle waffles. You can tell I'm feeling much better because I've got handfuls of bread. Empanada, so good. Um, it's pretty common over here, right? Super common. You find it in a lot of airports. It's a quick, easy meal. This one's full of cheese, but it's handmade by Nancy. She's been our cook for the past couple of days. Several stuffings. Yeah, different, like meat, right? Yeah. Meat, meat cheese. Yeah. Honestly, cheese is pretty good. It's like melted, so good. What's that? Macaw. Yeah, macaw. Empanadas are really good. I like the jungle waffles a lot. Really good. A lot different from the waffles in the US. You know they're good when you can't even be bothered to keep them on the plate. Yeah. I'm sad to say, this is our final morning here in Bolivia. The wind persists, of course, because we're here. I'm sure once we leave, you'll have perfect weather. And uh, we're just gonna go out there and sling some lures. Um, I think the bait thing, might still play a bit of factor, but at this point, like we, we both want to get messed up on a on a big glide. So we're gonna fin finish our jungle waffles and empanadas and hit it hard today. Seeing that's the last opportunity for probably a long time to fish here in the lagoon of dreams. Mm, so good. Final day in the jungle before we go. I'm gonna channel my inner avatar. I hope this is the tree of Arapaima. And uh, hopefully by connecting to the jungle, it'll be another big fish day today. You ready, Caleb? We are getting bait. It's, uh, it's been a windy morning. The local bait shop. The local bait shop. We're at the local uh, bait and tackle store right now. Getting some uh, triura and possibly some little catfish.
Yep. Really? Don't know how I missed him though. It was, a nip. It? it was a nip. Yeah. Ooh. Little, it, they're so light. Not yeah, good bites today. Definitely a fish. 100% of fish. Wow. Seeing as the wind is persisting, oh, there's one right there. We've uh, picked up some live bait. Nice size tri We're gonna get this rigged up and we're gonna do a drift, I believe. And see if we can go for a really big one. Uh, this morning, ooh, there she is. This morning was unsuccessful in our special. Got a couple bites, but they were short strikes. So with that in mind, uh, with them not being super keen on artificial, live baits the move. They do, do last longer. They leave the whole hook exposed. Better chances of a good hookup. Okay. I'm actually gonna get mine a ton of line. Yeah, it's a good one. Dude. You didn't need it though. No. Nope. He impacted. <laughs> oh, he's got it. He's got the it. The balloon's off. Bruno, he's yeah, yeah, the balloon's it. off. Yeah, yeah, he's got it. Yeah, he's got it. I'm going under you, John. Okay. So. Oh, I, I'm, I'm hit. I'm hit too. I'm hit too. I'm hit too. Cool. Should I start? I'm hit too. I'm also bit. Oh my god. Take it, man. We're doubled up. Doubled up. Doubled up, baby. No way. No. Way. We are doubled up right now. Oh, this is really hairy. Oh my gosh, this is unbelievable. Woo! 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 Oh, what's a nice one. What the? F He's, oh, it's so shallow. Oh, I'm off. You're off? Oh, we had doubles. I'm off. Wow, this is a good one. Pulled a hook. Pulled hook? Yeah. Damn, that would have been dope. Mine's gone, but the good news is. Oh, look at him, he bent the circle out, dude. It's a good one. This guy's tired out. Uh, let's just unhook him. What do you think? Yeah. yeah, we'll just get this guy unhooked and then, uh, well, there we go. We had a double, but uh, Scott's fish bent out the hook. It was a much bigger fish than mine. This is like a little 50, 40 pounder. Uh, so we're just gonna get this guy unhooked right at the boat and continue to fish. Still an absolute river monster. Uh, I think I'm just gonna tape them. Yeah, yeah, but let's bogue them and unhook them. I'm just curious. Be ready for that shake. We are boging this, we're gonna bogey this fish right here and unhook them boat side. Um, and we're also gonna get a measurement too. It's, uh, it's fun to get a measurement on these fish just to see how big they are. Impossible to say, probably 65 inches or so. Maybe ride him with the like with the current for a minute. Yeah. Let me give her a second. He's upright. And she's gone. Cool. It's tough to release him from the boat like that. It's uh, it's a lot easier to get in the water with them. It's almost like they're very much a shallow water fish, and when they're kind of suspended like that, it's, it's hard to get them going. But that fish is safely released. We're gonna redo our drift. We got plenty of bait left and. See if we can get another one. A real big one. Thanks, man. That was fun. Fish was head on your balloon, 30 feet away. Thank you. Wow, that's a big one. Well, we're going back in. That was an absolute cluster. We were doubled up, landed a little guy, and now I've got another Trihira. It's funny to think that we used to, Go back. Yeah. Scott and I would get stoked to, uh, to catch these in Brazil. Not the big version, but these small ones, still fun to catch on lure. Now they're bait. Well, the wind persists uh, every single day. It has blown roughly 15 to 20 to 30 mile per hour here in the jungle, which is not common, not normal. But seeing as we, we've come all the way to fish this amazing ecosystem, uh, it's only fitting that we uh, in some ways get cursed with a bit of bad weather. But we've been uh, chilling at camp for quite, quite some time. The boys are not feeling sick, which is not good. 
Uh, so not as bad as I'm, I've been feeling previously, but um, regardless of that, I think we're still gonna persevere and try to brave the wind and go out again. You're smiling, you look good, man. Thanks, man, appreciate it. It comes and goes. <laughs> <laughs> These boys are straight squirting, man. They're straight peeing out their butts. It's, it's been a rough go as far as the, the lower intestine goes. Uh, but hey, listen, it's the price you pay when you come out here to Bolivia to catch Arapaima. Um, yeah, uh, we've been celebrating with a couple beers and some water and some Chips Ahoy. And uh, yeah, I think I think in some Tums. We've been eating a lot of Tums and Pepto-Bismol. A beer, we follow every beer with a Pepto-Bismol. Pretty much. <laughs> all, I've, all I've had since like noon is Pepto, rice, and beer. <laughs> kind of offsetting probably to some degree, but... Yeah, no wonder why your stomach feels like <laughs> shit, dude. <laughs> maybe it's not the maybe it's not the, the, the meat that makes your stomach feel like shit. Maybe it's your current diet. Anyway, we still have uh, a good afternoon of fishing. It's still blowing like crazy, which is just so unideal for fishing, but we've been able to get it done every single day. Um, things have switched. The afternoon bite has been less productive as the morning bite, um, but... You know we're here so we got to make it happen and we're gonna make the attempt to go out there and, and crank on some fish as the sun goes down and the temperature drops fingers crossed i think uh you know not to sound greedy but one more good air pima on the lure would would be sweet this is it our final evening here in bolivia to catch an air pima it's been the fishiest big fish trip I've ever experienced. Every day we've got to encounter one of these jungle dragons, these lagoon beasts, these beasts from the Black Lagoon, and uh, it's going to be tough to say goodbye. Maybe this is our last time ever Arapaima fishing. I hope not, but at least for this year, I assume this will be the last opportunity we'll have. We've got some really good live bait. The crew was able to go out and fish us up some live traira. Shout out to them. We've got lines in the water. Scott's floating. I'm floating. Let's see if we can make these last two hours of this Bolivia sunset really shine with a nice big pima. Uh, the wolf's oh, I'm your bet. Oh yeah. Yep. 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 Get ready. Go. Go. You're good. You got. You got plenty of space. Real. 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 Oh yeah. Oh wow. Oh wow. Keep your rod tip low. Keep, just keep it under the grass. You're good. Just keep. Um, the thing is, I'm over the grass too. No, no, no. I'm trying to get over the grass here first. Down, down, down. Try it. You gotta go over that grass too. There. You're good. You're good now. Yeah. Nice. Let's go. We got one. For now. <laughs> trying to get one more air pine to wind this trip down. We're hooked up. Definitely still hung up in grass. It's off. It's off. Oh, the angle is horrible. I was over so much grass. Good, good. good. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm just bit. I just got bit. Oh, my God. Are you bit or just boiled? I think I just got bit. Yep, yeah, no, I just got bit. I just got. That's the bite. Oh, boy. Here we go, boys. Wow. That bite was. I think that is a fish that just sank a balloon, <laughs> which, by the way, is super buoyant. Like, it was a freaking. That was so stupid. We've gotten a lot of bites in that spot. Scott's caught a couple fish immediately after casting his triura in that little nook. Um, Scott just had a he's, bite. He's swimming Up. this way. See the line scoping towards yeah, us? Yeah, he's swimming towards us. That fish might be here right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying in terms of the angle. I'm gonna go out this way. It's gonna be funky. Yeah, yeah. but I'm gonna go out this way, period. This fish is swimming towards us right now, which is so, uh, that's very, not normal. But he's, he's under the grass. He's under the grass. You just let me know when, Bruno, you think. Okay. Uh -huh. Because you're going to end up under the edge. Maybe. When you feel tight, just close and okay. let it load. Yep, got him, got him, got him, got him. Oh, it's a good one. I think it's, it's a good fish. Setup right there. I think it's a good fish. I think this is a good fish. 
Wrong. I think it's off. Uh, no, maybe not. It's off. It's off. It's off. It's not what I could have done. No. That fit, I mean, I hooked, I set the hook on that fish so hard. Had the boat moving with you, too. Yeah. Spent. 0 for 2 this evening. Ay, ay, ay. Not the way you want to close. No. We gotta stick one. We gotta stick one. That was crazy. Felt, that felt good. I don't know if it was because it was matted under there and that fish put he was, some. He was ripping. Yeah, that was crazy. I think that was a good, just based upon the eat and how that fish felt on this rod. That was a good fish. Well, that's it. Quite literally hanging up the towel, hanging up the lure. This is the last moment in Bolivia on the Lagoon of Dreams. Yeah, no way. We do it all over again. Me too. For probably half the amount of airplane that we caught. There, there, was a, there was a bit of struggle in the beginning, you know, me being sick and... In the middle with me and Caleb being sick. And then Caleb and Scott also being sick, but it's a small price to pay for a once in a lifetime, for many people's perspective, trip and experience and adventure. You know, that's the whole reason why we came here is because it's an adventure. Like if this was an easy thing to do, I don't know if it would be as exciting. Everything that we've done over the past month, because Scott and I and Caleb and I have been filming and fishing for the past month has been not the easiest. Um, of course, we had a lot of help and a lot of great people setting us up for success, but it's not been the easiest to get to. Um, but that is, a, that is really what makes this kind of fishing exciting, the pursuit, the chase. Losing fish, you know, snapping line, watching a fish jump and spit your hook. It's like, that's kind of the beauty of the beast, or I guess the beast of the beauty uh, in this case, because when we started this trip off, it was a lot of triumph. It was a lot of, oh my gosh, we've got double arapaima. Like I've caught two in one day and I caught two on lures the next. And, Scott's got four, like just crazy action. And last day, we're a bit humbled. And in many ways, I think anglers would be upset, but you have to look at it from a half glass full of perspective. And that is that we caught over, we caught 11 fish out of this boat, um, all of which being very big. I think, you know, this is a trip where I'll be telling my grand, grandkids about when uh, they ask me, what, what was your favorite trip? What was your favorite big freshwater fish trip? And this is definitely gonna be one of the, one of the ones I bring up. So it's a memory that is uh, locked down forever. And I'm excited the fact that we got to document it for all you guys at home. We're gonna head back to camp, maybe have a beer or two, settle down and uh, get some rest before we leave back to La Paz. And then I believe Columbia, we're leaving after that. Oh wow, Arapama just jumps in the distance. A nice wave goodbye as we head out of here. But yeah, we're gonna head back, grab a beer, get some rest, and uh, get ready for a very long travel day back to the States in the morning. Arapaima, thank you. Bolivia, thank you. Bruno, thank you. Put it there, put it there. Mission success.